is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony and today we are in the new 2020 lincoln nautilus courtesy of apple lincoln in york pa and so this is my first ever lincoln review so i am quite excited to be in this one today so as always let's start with pricing all right so when it comes to pricing starting with the standard trim level that will start at forty two thousand thirty five dollars then you will have the reserve starting at forty nine thousand four hundred ninety five dollars and lastly the black label all-wheel drive starting at sixty four thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars and by the way that pricing for those first two trim levels was for the front wheel drive variant you can actually add all-wheel drive to those two trim levels if you wanted to do that simply add two thousand four hundred ninety five dollars to either of those prices all right so regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant will be the same with the exception of one additional optional engine setup but when it comes to the standard engine setup powering this little beast is going to be a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine putting out 245 horsepower at 5500 rpm 275 pound feet of torque available at 3000 rpm power is going to be sent to the front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters which we will be testing out in a little bit here and i did want to mention one additional thing with the eight speed automatic lincoln does something a little bit different than a lot of other manufacturers as far as the gear selection goes there's actually buttons just to the left of the infotainment screen so if you were to put it in drive simply just press the d button if you put it in reverse that's r obviously but it's a little different setup so i did want to mention that as well but so in the end as far as mpgs go with that engine setup that is going to come in at 21 in the city 26 highway for the front wheel drive 20 city 25 highway for the all-wheel drive and by the way that all-wheel drive option does go for two thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars if you were interested but then the other engine setup the more potent engine setup so to speak is going to be a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged v6 pointing out 335 horsepower 380 pound feet of torque sent to front wheels or all wheels again through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifter zero to 60 approximately six seconds flat on that engine setup which is crazy because it's an suv right but anyways mpg numbers on that one come in at 18 in the city 25 on the highway so now that having said all of that i think you guys know what time it is let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here and let's see how quickly they react for us All right, there is a slight delay with the paddle shifters, but it is nice that they are there still on an SUV. You can use it for some engine braking, maybe when it snows out or something like that, but there is an ever so slight delay. But now having done that, let's go ahead and just let the car take control once again. And let's do a quick little acceleration and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Lincoln Nautilus up to speed. Actually, not too bad considering we don't have the twin turbocharged v6 certainly not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway for me i kind of want the twin turbo v6 but definitely plenty of pickup for this one though then to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so we will find front and rear ventilated disc brakes and as far as the braking feel goes i've had absolutely no issues today there's no brake pedal delay or anything like that then touching on suspension and handling a little bit did want to mention there is a S underneath of the D here, and that is gonna give you a sport mode. So it does immediately downshift for you, holding the RPMs at a much higher level. So a little better acceleration there as well. So that was definitely nice during that acceleration there. But in addition to that, there are actually some drive modes that adjust some of the suspension components that can be found on the reserve and black label trim levels. And essentially what that is going to do is adjust the damping system. So it's gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections for a little bit of ride quality there. But at the same time, it's also going to tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds there. It's actually also going to adjust the steering sensitivity as well. So that is pretty cool that that's there, if you ask me. Overall, although we are going at a very slow speed right now, the ride quality is pretty much amazing on the Nautilus. So definitely no complaints from me there. As far as steering sensitivity goes, it is pretty much as expected. Touching like cabin noise, there is both windshield and front side glass acoustic laminated glass so that is going to soak up a lot of the exterior road noises giving you a very quiet cabin so i'm probably pretty loud right now but that is the reason why definitely very quiet on the inside here and since we're sitting at a red light might as well take a look at visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back actually sometimes those second row headrests do kind of protrude up a little more but really not an issue and they're kind of i feel like they're wider on this too so i can definitely see just fine out the back did want to also mention i'm looking at a frameless rear view mirror i'm 
always a big fan of that as well. And there is an additional rain sensing windshield wiper option for $785 if you wanted to go that route. It's kind of like automatic headlights. They're going to come on automatically for you when the Nautilus detects rain or even a drizzle. So you never have to worry about that. Of course, that's going to help you with a little bit of visibility as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Lincoln Nautilus. All right, so here is the 2020 Lincoln Nautilus. In case you guys were curious, this color we have today is called Burgundy Velvet. It is a $695 option if you wanted it. Anyhow, first thing I noticed at least is looking at the front grille, it actually looks like there's a Lincoln pattern. Like all of these little shapes that we have here are in the shape of a Lincoln emblem. Maybe it's just me, but I think this is pretty cool. Moving out a little bit, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and LED signature lighting will come standard. So you can imagine this is going to look pretty darn sweet at night. And they will also come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there. And if you were to go with the black label, they are multi-projector headlamps with dynamic bending, meaning those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle at night, better illuminating what's around the corner so you don't hit any deer or anything else basically but also did want to mention they do have dark housings as well that looks pretty good but and so but then making our way to the side satin roof rails that is a only 195 dollar option so it's probably worth it in my book chrome window surrounds will come standard on every single trim level of course you got the nautilus logo or the lettering found in the front doors that also definitely looks good there and I do want to mention there are some chrome inserts on the door handles also found on the side skirts down below as well. So definitely more of a high end look there. Touching on the side mirrors a little bit. They are power folding heated side mirrors with LED integrated turret signals and the memory feature as well. So they always go back to right where you set it previously. That's definitely nice. Take a look at the wheel setup. 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels come with the standard and select. 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels with the reserve and 21 inch aluminum alloy wheels with the black label. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. First thing I wanted to mention is there is a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for every single trim level just below that rear window wiper. Do also like how Lincoln is spelled out horizontally in between the taillights. Nice little upscale touch if you ask me. Did want to also mention since I mentioned those taillights, they are LED taillights with LED reverse lights actually as well. I like the LED light bar that ties together the left and right taillight that definitely looks good. But all the way to the bottom then dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back, I did want to mention to open that rear lift gate, there actually is a button on the key fob and it is a power operated lift gate, by the way, and it is hands free for every single trim level for the 2020 Nautilus. That is one of the, perhaps the main change between the 2020 and the 2019 is hands free lift gate comes standard on every single trim level now, but once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 37.2 cubic feet. For reference, let me compare this a little bit. Lexus RX comes in at 18.9 cubic feet behind that second row bmw x5 34 cubic feet so that is why ford claims the lincoln nautilus has the best in class cargo capacity behind that second row so that's pretty cool uh, with the rear seats down there is a 60 40 split that bumps it up to 68.8 cubic feet and there is an easy fold seat back release so to fold those second row seats down there's actually a button in the cargo area or buttons i should say so simply just press them and that is how that's going to fold down for you did want to also mention underneath that floor there is a spare tire of course and some in-floor storage compartmentalized so if you wanted to hide some stuff that is where you're going to be able to do it also there's some grocery hooks back there and and actually a subwoofer as well, but we'll get more into the sound system in a little bit. Now make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 39.6 inches. That 39.6 inches, comparatively speaking, is more than the BMW X5 and the Mercedes GLC class as well, if you're comparing. But those second row passengers will also get heated second row seats if they were to go with the reserve trim level that we have today or the black label. 
Also, a rear seat entertainment system is going to be available for an additional $2,000 if you wanted it. Rear ventilation can also be found back there, but let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. 10-way power adjustable front seats will come standard on every single trim level, and that will give you power lumbar as well and memory settings, and they will be heated, and all of that comes standard, by the way. Ventilated front seats will come with the reserve and black label trim levels if you wanted to go that route. And one of the coolest things Lincoln does is there's slightly different leather setups depending upon your trim level. For example, the reserve that we have today, there is a Bridge of Weir deep soft leather that is going to come on these seats. So a little bit different there, and also a Venetian leather if you were to go with the black label. So even more high end. That's pretty cool that it does that. But anyways, they want to also mention there's a $1,500 seating option as well, giving you 22 way power adjustable front seats which should be more than enough as far as finding your perfect driving position, I will say that. And by the way, that option also gives you massaging front seats and that option is available for the reserve and the black label trim levels. But now taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping and is manually adjustable for the standard, power adjustable for all other trims and is actually leather wrapped for all trim levels. And it will be heated if you were to go with the reserve or black label. But now let's get to the startup here. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. It essentially looks identical to my Ford Mustang GT key. You do have the Lincoln logo on the one side. And of course, when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the times two button in the middle there, that is gonna be a remote start, which comes standard on every single trim level as well as a push button start, which is located just to the left of the climate control settings there. So all I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. Let's open them once started up, you will find a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster for every single trim level. Definitely looks amazing up there if you ask me. And there are a bunch of different options. You can control different things within that gauge setup using the steering wheel mounted controls, including things like your tire pressure, radio settings, trip A, trip A. There's a bunch of stuff, honestly, but I love that it is all a digital gauge setup, I guess as expected since we have a Lincoln, of course. Take a look at overall interior quality. A panoramic Vista roof with a power sunshade will come with the reserve and black label. And you will find a wireless phone charger if you go with all trim levels, but the standard and by the way that wireless phone charger is going to be found in the cubby area directly in front of the cup holders there universal garage door openers can be found again on all trim levels but the standard and depending on the setup that you go with there are authentic wood trims available including an ash wood walnut wood so that is definitely more high end as well dual zone climate control of course comes standard ambient lighting standard on all trim levels but the standard and there is an overhead sunglass holder again for all trims did want to add the black label trim level actually gives an Alcantara headliner with Alcantara binded floor mats. That's kind of interesting. You never see Alcantara on floor mats, at least I haven't, but you love that there's an optional Alcantara headliner though. And there is a lot of soft touch material until you get to around the tech display and the climate control options. That is where it is still hard plastic, but other than that, everything else pretty much is soft touch. So overall, the interior is finished quite well, in my opinion. But now let's take a look at the tech display. 8-inch color touchscreen display will come standard on all trim levels. That is the Sync 3 system, of course. Bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard, as well as Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Meaning, if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to this one. You have free navigation through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike those Pandora songs up there. You can also check out your climate control information up there as well, along with your radio set. Settings. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get an 11 speaker sound system with the subwoofer if you were to go with the standard trim level. Then there's a 13 speaker sound system for the reserve and 19 speakers for the black label. So you guys know what we have to do next. Let me go ahead and turn on Sirius XM. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> ton of bass on the sound system this 13 speaker sound system we have today definitely enough clarity really i didn't expect any issues but sound system is definitely pretty nice on this one then last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display is when you do put the nautilus in reverse you will find a rear view camera a 360 degree camera with a camera washing system for every single trim level letting you know who or what is behind you and by the way not only does that display when you put it in reverse but there actually is a camera button just to the right of that infotainment screen so if you wanted to press that if you were pulling into a tight parking spot that's definitely going to be convenient there as well but as always that 
is going to lead us into safety. And so to start there are front side and side curtain airbags, also driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there. There's a tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard pedestrian detection, a pre-collision assist system with automatic emergency braking, blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert. That's gonna be the little icons in the side mirrors preventing you from turning into the car next to you, of course. There is also an optional driver assistance package that goes for $1,590, and that is gonna add an adaptive cruise control system with stop and go and lane centering. So the car is gonna speed up when the car in front of you does and slow down when the car in front of you does. So therefore it is a very intelligent cruise control system, of course. Adaptive steering also comes with that package and a collision mitigation system. Lastly, the technology package that goes for $1,720. That is gonna give you enhanced active park assist, front park aid sensors, and a 360 degree camera. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.